Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game College, and I'm reviewing Things and Wings from All Play. Things and Wings is designed by Peter Hayward. It's a two to six player game of trying to figure out the categories for different things as you play this game. It's elements of deduction, with the player running the game and then other players trying to get there first, to figure out what the patterns are first. To that end, and by the way, I should say, I am aware it's a little darker in here. Uh, I'm moving right now and some of the lights are gone. This, in fact, might be the last review filmed on this set. Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this over here. The general idea is you have a Venn diagram. Not the prettiest Venn diagram, but it does functionally work. We have our red, which is the context of the word. We have the yellow, which is the word itself, something related to the way the word is spelled, just something along those lines. And then we have, over here, we have blue, relating to the attribute of the item. To that end, we're going to go ahead and grab three decks, and we'll make this easy for you. I'm going to be the uh, the game master right now, and you'll go ahead and guess. So I'm going to grab one of these cards over here, and this will be related to that, although we're not going to show you what it is. I'm specifically choosing the earlier difficulties over here, so I'll grab a red, put it over there, and then I'll grab a blue and put it over there. Now, you won't actually see these. I'm going to go ahead and look at them, and your job is to figure it out. Okay, okay, so I have something about the context. The context to word this off specifically is about the position or use of the object in society. Example, makes a good gift related to sports. Okay, and that's gonna make sense in a second, but we have that card there. For blue, we have that one, that's fun. All right. The attribute of an item is going to be, as it says on the card, about the physical properties of the object. For example, contains metal, has moving parts. Those are good examples over there. And then for word, we have, okay. And then we have over here, the word is going to be things like examples, starts and ends with the same letter or three syllables. So that's going to be an example of what that is. And then the players, one at a time, are going to hand things. Now this is where we're going to play it a little differently. Normally the players would have a hand of cards, and they'd go ahead and submit a card to the D to the person running the game, and that person would take the card and put it into one of the various sections. That could be directly red, it could be directly blue, directly yellow, any of the three overlaps, or the all overlaps, or you could even put a card down in none. If it matches none, of those things. But because I'm not actually running the game, I'm just going to go ahead and just draw cards at random, and we'll go ahead and put them out. We have soda over here. So, soda, I would say soda is going to go over here. Okay, that means it applies to the red attribute and the yellow attribute. Now, what I'm going to do over here, and this part might be boring if you don't get it, so to speak, but effectively, oh, it's going to be hard. I can't, I can't really. You know what? I'm going to go through a few of these. I can't really run the game because the way the game works is actually a good thing with the game, but it means I can't run it with a fictional viewer. So we'll just go through a few of these and then go through on a time. We have this one over here. This one is, well, I guess it's almost certainly going to be these two. So it's going to be this overlap over here. Now we're going to put another card out. Now keep in mind the players are taking turns one at a time to go ahead and submit cards. But the thing that's different, and you're usually going to start with a few cards on the board. I should say that. You start with a few cards on the board. This one is, that's an interesting one. I'm going to put it just over here, okay? And you have to choose, the, the, the clue giver, so to speak, has to choose where the cards go. You'll seed the board with a few starting cards like this. And then players, what they do is they don't just hand their card to the clue giver or the clue master or whatnot. Rather, they take a card and they guess where that card is going to go. So, for example, now that you have all this information over here, where would this card go? Which Venn diagram do you think it goes? You don't necessarily know enough about what's going on over here, but you do see that we have soda over here, we have barn over here. Uh, maybe something found outside. So we'll go ahead and put this out over here. Unfortunately, that's actually not correct. I'm going to put this, I'm debating. It definitely doesn't go there. It definitely doesn't go there. I don't think it goes here. I'm going to say it goes into none. Okay, it goes into none. We'll grab another card. We'll have the next player guess. The next player will go ahead and guess, and they'll say that the necklace, you know what? Soda, maybe it's metal. No, metal will be over there. So soda can't be metal. Uh, necklace... Uh, you know, I don't know, we'll just get a necklace, we're just going to go ahead and put it down over here, okay? And the answer is no, in fact, once again, I'm pretty sure necklace goes over here. And you could guess to put on the outside as well, by the way. We'll grab another card, we have lamp. I don't know, lamp, it gives light, okay? Maybe it gives light, that's the attribute. And um, I'm going to say yes over here. No, no, I'm actually going to put it over here. Okay, I'm going to move it over there. But that means they have to draw another card. Your goal is to get rid of your cards, and as you figure out where things go, even if you haven't figured out the exact attribute, you're going to slowly piece things together. If you ever played games like Decrypto, that's the kind of puzzle you're figuring out. It's not about actually figuring out what exactly is any of the three colors. What is the exact rule in play? You don't need to do that. You need to be able to figure out enough that you can correctly place where your cards are going to go to get rid of them. So, for example, we'll grab this and we have key. 
Well, key could be context. I don't know, something you find or I don't know. Uh, the word, let's go ahead and put it down. Let's put it over here. And um, I'm going to say that, no, no, nah, I'm going to say yes. I will say it goes here. In fact, this is where it does go. Now, granted, I am cheating. I know all the words over here. But that's the general idea. You're going to go ahead and uh, place things down. So in order to keep you a little bit involved, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and seed, uh, let's say, five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to go ahead and just grab three random cards over here. And I'm going to have you, as the viewer, guess where you think those three random cards are going to go. And then I'll place them. And that will give you an idea of the experience you're trying to go with. So right now, let me just grab some cards over here. We have church. Church is going to go probably there. Non. It's going to go here. Church is going to go there. We have Comet. I don't know. I guess I guess Comet can go here as well. We're going to put that there as well. We have Candle. This, this is such a weird kind of situation, but I think Candle... We'll probably put Candle over here, but I could argue the debatable aspect of it. Ooh, Calculator. That's going to be over there. And then we have Branch which I am going to put down over here once again. So in that so section there, which granted doesn't give you enough information about everything else, but now we'll have you try to guess these three cards. Where do you think Kite goes? Where do you think Kite goes? And the answer was over here. Where do you think Compass goes? Co oh, actually Kite. Kite goes over here. Kite goes there. We have a Compass over here. Um... I think it would. I think it would. And then we have bathtub, which is going to go, where do you want to put this one? Bathtub, I believe, is actually going to go here. Okay. Now, what were the three rules? Well, the rule for context was something you can expect to find in a school. You can definitely find a calculator there. I believe you should be able to find soda for sure. Keys are definitely in school. Kites, probably. Candles, I have to imagine there's some candles. And compass, like the science teacher's got to have one somewhere, right? We have the word is going to be five or fewer letters. So calculate and compass are higher than that. Candle, kite, actually candle was a lie. That was a terrible lie. Candle, six letters. Uh, we have five or fewer letters. Church is six letters. Dear Lord, I cannot count. Uh, branch is six letters. I am playing this game terribly. I apologize for that. But over here, we have all these five or fewer letters. And uh, let's pretend I did six or fewer letters because that would make everything okay. But anyways, as far as that goes, this is where you'd have the breakdown. So five or fewer letters are everything in this yellow circle, but all of these are six or higher. And then lastly, for the uh, for the attribute, we had flammable, which is interesting because so many things were actually things that are on fire. Candles on fire, campfires on fire, comets on fire, but I guess inherently if it's on fire, it must be flammable, right? Then we have branch, church, lamp. Lamp was an interesting one, but anything with light bulbs got to be flammable to an extent. A barn's definitely flammable, a kite's flammable. This is key, soda, calculator, and compass. I don't think of them as flammable, maybe a calculator, but that's pushing it a bit. Although possibly, I mean, how flammable do you have to go? But anyways, that's the basic idea of the game. The game is going to have players giving cards to various spots. The clue, the clue master, the, the person running the game, is going to decide where those cards go. If you got it right, you got rid of one of your cards. If you got it wrong, you draw a new card to replace it. You're going to do that until you get rid of all your cards, which is where you don't even need to figure out the exact clues. So, for example, one time I thought the clue for uh, context was something you could buy in a store. No, something you could find in a house, and it was actually something you could buy in a store. But those two things very much have a high overlap in what those categories are. This is where having all these cards is going to be a big deal. Deal because you have level two ones, for example, which are first letter is repeated within the word. So rural versus eerie. We have rings over here. Rings are not rings. I don't say that. We have the difficulty three. First two letters are in alphabetical order. That's so specific. That's so specific. Alphabetical order for the first two letters, like direct alphabetical, like A, B. That is such a very niche level of whatever. For context, for a level two context clue, you'd have something like usually only owned by rich people. And then over here, we'd have context clue of could help you survive in the wilderness. Again, these are very specific clues. And then we get the, the, the attribute over here for level two attribute floats in water. And for level three attribute, we have has a standard size, has a standard size. That's like a church doesn't have a standard size. A calculator probably does. A compass probably does. Anyways, that's basically how you play things in rings. It's a game of trying to deduce what the commonality between things is. It doesn't really matter if you're directly right. What matters is that you're able to get close enough to be able to get rid of your cards faster than the other players. And with that, it's time for the review, where I'm not going to follow my usual format of like, don't like, and is not liking, and I'll just jump straight to it. I love this game. I adore this game. This is 
everything, this, the, the logic puzzle that this game creates, while not being strictly forced into actually figuring out what the clue is, this game is such an enjoyable experience. Now, it's not perfect and it might not be for you. There are some things that are going to get in the way. The biggest thing for me is the fact that inherently, as you play this game and learn more of these cards, there is a difference between being able to look at the board and figure it out versus knowing, knowing that you have this card over here has one or more repeated letters. If you know that exists and as you play the game more and more, you'll find out more of these cards, it will give you a leg up on the other players. Other players are looking for unknown patterns. You're looking for unknown patterns, but you also know there's seven or eight of a certain pattern you can look for as well. So that is going to give an edge to people who play the game more, which is my personal biggest strike against the game. Outside of that though, this might just not be a game for you because you may not like the deductive process. You may not like the deduction aspect. You may not like the fact that the DM, the person running it effectively, has to make judgment calls about where things go that you could debate. A calculator might be flammable. I could hear someone making that argument and I wouldn't challenge them too hard about it, but you have to go with whatever you think or they have to go with whatever they think is the most accurate and it is what it is and you might not like that degree of uncertainty especially if you've played the game and the last time you played the game calculated what was flammable this time it isn't it can really throw you off although you can make the argument it actually balances out the whole uh, person who knows the game too well aspect so it's not a perfect game between those two things. There's a whole bunch of wards, enough to keep you busy for a long time. But outside of those things, I love this kind of game. I like deduction games in general, but I tend to like social deduction games more, which social deduction is a different category technically. But I like deductive games where the table is involved, where everyone's involved in the game. I like the process of being able to look and make a judgment call of, I'm pretty sure a branch probably goes over here, only to find it moved over here and you have to draw another card. But making those decisions around which cards to get rid of from your hand and when to redraw another card as the table gets fuller and fuller slowly but surely giving you more information you're like looking for patterns and I do find often the yellow the award is often the easiest one to do from their attribute as well and context tends to be the most vague but nonetheless you still are able to piece together pieces of information and see commonalities what do these things have in common if you are someone who's played Decrypto which I already mentioned in this review then you'll you'll see that kind of puzzle there Decrypto is a game about two different teams trying to solve and crack each other's clues but you don't actually have to figure out what their words are, you just have to figure out the patterns of how those things combine. How do you tie these different things together? And it very much has that logical puzzle, that kind of sense of what am I doing? How do I get there? How do I figure this out? But it's done in such a charming way. And we haven't even talked about the name, like Things and Rings, the whole Dr. Dr. Seuss aesthetic and theme to the game works beautifully as well as a good delivery. To me, this is an excellent, excellent game. I, I Ever since I first played this, I have loved playing it. It's one that, it's one of those games that I like it so much that I I, I, it's a hard to deal with my game group because I always want to play it and they reasonably don't necessarily want to play it as much as I do. But uh, I, I restrict myself as much as I possibly can. But it is a delightful experience. For me, as far as review, as far as final thoughts on this one, Things and Rings to me is a 5 out of 5. It may not be a game for you, but this is exactly the kind of party slash deductive game that I enjoy. This has the same kind of vibes that I get from games like, and speaking of recommendations, we'll jump back and forth between recommendations and final thoughts here, but games like Codename, So Clover, Dick Crypto, it very much has those commonalities, just one for that matter, where you're looking at pieces of disparate pieces of information and you're trying to combine them into something that you can piece it all together. I love all those games. They're some of my favorite party games, and Things and Rings joins that group. It has has a deductive element to it, but it has a social, enjoyable, just fun element to it as well. The overall experience gives you strategic reward, it gives you social reward, it gives you laugh out loud fun. It is a 5 out of 5 for me. All play, is, all play and Peter Hayward have knocked it out of the park. If you like any of the games I mentioned, I highly recommend checking this one out. It may well be the next one for you as well. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.